So here's the problem. My water cooler pump on my uh, AlphaCool iSpare water cooler got really, really loud. I saw the flow meter stop moving and, well, the motor obviously is shot. And that's pretty bad because this is a relatively new unit. And they sent me this pump motor, which will work fine, but this pump has this LED light on it. And if you want to keep it, you've got to rewire it like the original one. And this is the challenge. Uh, I've already done a little disassembly. We have this ring here that went on the top of it as so originally to hold this down inside this structure with these screws and we need this piece to replace it with. Now the way they did is they spliced the ground and the power wire in line. So what we need to do to make this happen is <laughs> we have to modify this. And to modify this, it's a bit of a problem. And, oh, by the way, I want to apologize. I already played with this and I took the rubber boot that you normally see right there and I put it on this. I took it from here, put it here, but I got to take this off again and you're going to see why. Because what we're going to do is we have to totally disassemble the sheeting and everything, cut the wires, solder it in, and then reassemble this. And to do this, you need a few tools. You need a screwdriver to remove the pins, um, some wire cutters to cut the wire, and I'll show you in a minute, not cut, but strip it a little bit, and a knife to actually cut the splice strip out, and you need a soldering iron and some solder. And what we need to do is pull this off and do this so we could put these wires on it. So let's get to that. For the first, first thing I want to do is just show you this. What they did is they stripped out a section of wire here and they soldered these on. And then they just pulled this back and they had a little shrink tubing on here. Oh, you also need to have some shrink tubing that we're going to be using. And there's another thing that you may miss. Um, they put these like rubber sticky washers here that you really can't take and reuse. So my creative solution is I'm going to use this very thin double-sided tape to just cut a little washer and put it on here and that helps with the vibration dampening. So I've got that little piece left over from one of my drone projects. I'd like to build drones too. So I'm going to stick that over there for now. So let's start with the disassembly here. So we're going to take the screwdriver and we are going to put it in these holes right here. And by the way, I want you to pay close attention to the wiring, black, red, blue. You could use the other one as a sample. Black, red, blue. Do not mess up that order because you're going to need to know that. So we're going to take the screwdriver and this is pretty easy. It's got to be a flathead screwdriver. Get out of there. And just put it in that hole. Put your fingers or tweezers, whatever you got on this. Push it down and the wire should just come out. You see it has this little spring on the bottom there. So let's go do this to these three wires and you're going to see why we need to do that. You're also going to need to do this on the other one, but I recommend you do it one at a time so you don't forget the wiring color. And if you do, you know, you could just write it down or as I did, uh, take a picture with your phone so you remember exactly the order and on the side. Well, this one's a little sticky. Come on, out with you. Just come right out. There it is. Okay. And just be careful you don't play with those pins. Now that you got that off, set that aside. Don't lose it. On this one, you'll do the same thing to take the rubber boot off. And I imagine I did that on that. And you're going to stick this over there for now. Now that you got that off, we got this shrink tube. We're going to replace the shrink tube. And you know, you'll, you'll need to have some more shrink tube. And for that, because you can't get that over there. So uh, we're going to have to very, very carefully cut the shrink tube. We will be replacing it. And score that a little bit. Be very careful. You don't want to cut the wires. Okay. 
On this side also we have some shrink too, but we're going to be replacing that too. Be very careful again, you don't want to cut beyond just the shrink tube. You see very light pressure and it would just split and you can start peeling that off. Again, very careful, you just want to score the tube, you don't want to touch the wires inside. You don't have to cut all the way through it, you just got to score it and then that will come through. It's okay if you do it a couple of times to score it. Okay, we don't, those pieces are just garbage now. That's junk. Now that we got that off, we could take the sleeve. And by the way, if you have another color, you could change it at this point. And we're going to take the sleeve off. And you may need to stretch it a little bit. Actually, we don't even need to totally remove the sleeve. We just need to bring it down enough. Okay, very good. Now that we got the sleeve down, we have the wires exposed, just like we do here. The blue wire we're not going to touch. And we want to just pick a point. You know, here we are about, oh, maybe an inch and a half down. So I'll pick you that about that point. Actually, I'm going to have to take this off to get the um, shrink tube on. I did forgot about that. So let's go and uh, see what we can do about getting these through. Well, okay. Again, we want to, oh, it looks like they um, melted this a little bit, so that might take a little playing, take a little screwdriver, stretch that out a little bit. There you go. And good. <laughs> Make sure those tips are in there. So we're going to save this also. Now that we got this done, we need to... Find that spot about yeah, about a you know length of my thumb tip, and I've already calibrated this. Again, we would need to um, make a splice like that. So take your wire strippers and set the hole so you just enough that you can put it in there, twirl it a little, and be able to pull that off. But in our case, we're not going to do that. We're going to make a twist, a twist. And then we're going to use our knife to cut that out. So let's do that now. I'm going to come in here about there. Just squeeze it down. I'm going to give it a little twist. And then I'm going to come up a little bit. You don't need a lot. And give it a little twist. I'm going to do this. And, you, and you'll notice I got some score marks now. Right there. And I'm going to do the same to the black one. About the same place. Then up a little, and I mean, you might want to twirl the wire and stuff, and when you're done, you'll have those two little notches there. And you take your knife, and again, very carefully, because you don't want to cut the wire inside, you just want to cut the, the insulation. You just want to go between those two lines, and just kind of like peel it off a little bit with your knife. Use your knife tip and kind of like roll it till the wires get exposed. And after a while you should be able to catch this. And pull the insulation off between those slits. Might take a little bit of work. See, we're getting it. I'm going to cover this with some shrink tube when we're done. If you want to, you could even use some tweezers once you got them nicked. Let's get a little pull. Fingernails also work. And it should just come back to where you scored it. Oh, got a little bit more on this side. And you don't want to 
want to be careful you don't untwist the wire too when you're at it. Here we go. Okay. And then when you're done, you might want to give it a little twist to make sure it's there. Okay, that's one. Now let's do the red one. Oh, this fell off. If this happens, it just goes in that little space right there. I'll leave it off for now. I'll put it back later. It's probably going to fall off again. And for the black wire. Again, let's do this again. We're going to score the between the cuts. Use your knife tip to open the score up. It's all right to pull in the wire a little bit. Let's get that started so you can pull it off. Fingernails are good tools in this task too. All right, that's the hardest part of it. Now that we've got that, we need to borrow these wires. So we're gonna use our soldering iron now. I've got this nifty little one. <clears throat> okay, so let's use my hands here and just apply a little heat. I don't know what solder they used. If it's lead-free solder, it's gonna take a little bit more heat. Let's see if we're up to temperature. Now we need to be hotter. Let's go raise the temperature on this. Go for 340. Let's see, are we soldering? Okay, now we got some melty solder. By the way, if you put a little solder on there, it helps conduct the heat. So let's see. Being this is from Germany, they often use lead-free solder, and that takes a little bit more heat. Okay, that came off. Good, 340 is the magic temperature, and that came off. We're done with this. That's the old pump. We're going to put it aside, clean our tip, and we're going to take our solder, and let's do a little tinning here. Needs wires a little bit. And let's in this one a little bit. Make sure these wires are separate. By tinning, you're you're helping uh, the solder flow. It makes life easier. Just applying tin there. That's good. Okay. Now also we have the old solder, so I want to take that off because it's always good to put fresh solder on them. Let's see if I can just take some of that old solder off. And we're going to retin this with some fresh solder. So it sticks better. And I want it to in both sides because I'm going to be doing something else with that too. So um, let's uh, have some helping hands here. Let's go use those. <laughs> Magnetic watch. And we're going to send these wires because they used uh, little clips before to hold them on. And I'm not going to be doing that. I'm going to be soldering these on. So I'm going to actually um, make it a little bit more permanent. So I'm going to sort I'm going to tin these. Uh, I'm going to tin these as well. I'll make a little cleaner build too. Cleaner repair. 
And these wires are kind of long, so I'll probably trim them down after I solder them. Actually, before I solder them. Okay. Well, that's that for now. And as I said, I want to um, just make these a little shorter. We don't need to make them so long. Boom. Boom. Okay. So everything is pre-soldered now. And then we need to put these on. Oh, that's a little glop there. Okay. So what we want to do is take these. Actually, I think what I want to do is going to bring them off like this. So I can even just wind them up a little bit. Like that. There we go. And now, because I already have solder on there, I should be able to just flow the solder between the two of them. There we go. And that is attached. Let's see if I get a little bit tighter. So get that a little bit tighter. Careful when you do this because your fingers are going to get hot. You know what, one thing I don't like about what I just did here is I got that little bump. Let me see if I can just squeeze that out. Just so the shrink tube will go on a little more easily. This is a little hack right now. You don't have to do this. It's just... I got a little bit of a bump I don't like. Okay. That's good. If you give it a tug, that's good. Let's go do the other one now. And by the way, I'm having it go down this way because it'll be easier to get the shrink tube on it. All right, so I'm going to take this. I'm going to put it somewhere in the middle of there. Twist it around a little bit. And apply some heat. Oh, it's not taking as well. And I think this needs a little bit more solder, so I'm just going to put a little drop there. Okay, we got the red wire on now. Now that we have those on, let's go take our shrink tube. And this is a little long, so I'm going to cut this down in half. And we're going to slide that down the red and the black. And if this tube is big enough, okay, there we go. And the black, and we're just putting this right back the way it was, it once was. At this point, we're going to need our heat gun. I got a big ass heat gun. And let's see what we can do about shrinking. Let's make sure you've got it well covered. You don't want any shorts here. And shrink that down. there we go okay and there we go now we have this right back the way it was on the original and instead of using um, 
just a quick connect, we're going to actually solder this on with some more shrink tube. So here's another piece of shrink tube. Uh, and I'm not going to solder this just yet. We've still got work to do. But in preparation, I am just going to slide this here because I don't want to solder and forget my shrink tube until after I soldered. I've done that before. So I'm just going to put that there so I don't set aside because I don't want to forget that. Okay, so now that we've got this, we're going to need some thicker shrink tube because we need to put it up here to go over the sheathing again. So we need it so it's below this knuckle here. So I'd say about... Well, the shrink tube is going to come up to here, so... Yeah, that'll be okay. That'll be fine. Just keep it the way it is. It's not going to hurt anything. Well, keep it the way it is. Yeah, I'm going to make it a little shorter. And we're going to put that down. And you're going to see why we're doing this now in this order. We're not going to shrink it yet, because we've got to get the tubing in there. And we're going to take this and bring it over those splices. So we have just these coming out. Okay, and just leave it there for now. Then we're going to take this and we're going to put it back. And this might be a little tougher. Let's see. Got to open that up. Here's where ply uh, tweezers can become useful. You can just take it and just spread it open. There we go. We're just going to push that through. Pushing through, pushing through. Come on. Should be coming out soon. We can roll that up while we do this. There we go. There we go. So now that we got that, we are going to take this and roll that back over the sheathing. I suppose I could put the sheet I could have put the sheathing on first. Doesn't really matter, I guess. And for this one we're gonna have to put yeah this one on in a minute. So let's go put that on and just let's see how we on the covering. Very nice. Whoops too much. Get that back on there. And that's that whole assembly. So now we have to assemble this end. Make sure that those springs are out and those little clips are up. If you need to, use your knife to pop them up a little bit. But before we begin, we got to put the little rubber boot on, which sits in that hole right there. And let's get this on here. Push that in. Now getting the sheathing through might be a little difficult let's see nope that wasn't too hard and we're going to bring that back here we'll just leave that there for now now that we got that we could put our shrink tube on just leave that like there and now we can put our clip back on again remember from our past one, the color is black, red, blue with those holes up the top. So take your little clippy thing, your modular end, turn it with the spring facing down, slide black, red, and blue. Make sure they're already up there. And let's go see if they're all tight. Blue's good. Black's good. Red. 
not so good. So let's go take our knife, and there's a little clip there. Just looks like it pushed down a little bit, and we just need to get that to uh, pop up a little bit. Looks like it's got a little recessed. Okay, we got we got it up. Okay, that was uh, not pleasant. Let's get that in there now. Oh, that's right. I think I overcorrected a little bit. Let's see if it goes in. Yeah, there we go. Now the red's in there to stay. That was not the way I like to do it. Okay, very good. Now that we got that, we can slide this down to there. I'm going to slide this down. Let's bring the wires up just a little bit. It might be a little longer than I'd like, but it's okay. And let's shrink that down. Careful not to melt that. And the sheeting too, you'll melt if you overdo it. And there we go. Now for this one, let's stretch the sheeting a bit. this ready to ba install back into the pump and we've got our tap wires and this is the old one that no longer works well so we're going to put that aside now the next thing we need to do is we'll put this ring back on that fell off it's got to fit inside of the groove. Make sure it's all the way in there because that's your water seal. Before we put the motor back in here, we got a few things we got to do. We have to get this ring back on and make sure that the ring is on the outside of these. We want these on the end. Also, on the previous pump, we had this these kind of like sticky washer thingies that, um, well, we need to put those on there. They were kind of dampeners. Um, I'm going to put them on a little later, I think, because where they're going to go is on the pump, actually. These are the screws that they hold down to. So I'm going to put one right there and the other right there. And make sure they're on the high side of those little thingies there. A little ridge and I'm just gonna put that there that's fine this is double-sided tape and it will compress just fine so the holes will the screws will go through those holes so I'm gonna set that aside for now and for this before we put it on we need to solder these back together and again we have the shrink tubes there already so let's get this 
There's still a temperature. Now this might be a little bit tricky because they need to go together just like that. So let's see if we how quickly we can do this. Okay, we've already got the solder on them. That's pretty good. That seems pretty good. Give it a nice tug, make sure they're not going anywhere. We're done with our soldering. We can turn off the iron. And we're gonna just take those shrink tubes and just slide it right back over there. And we are going to have that insulation. Again, I'm doing this instead of those caps because uh, I think this is neater and I don't know. I'm not a tech. I'm not some small fingered girl who does this. So now we got that tubing shrunk down. We have our light connected in line with everything else. And this is done. This is exactly the way it came from the factory, except we made that a little neater. So before we put our motor on, make sure that O-ring is perfectly seated in there. And I got my little double-sided tape there. And we're just going to set these right on there. The nice thing about the double-sided tape is it also helped with the hold in place. I'm going to give it a little push. Double-sided tape was my idea. And that's basically for some dampening because it had those rubber things on there originally. Oh, don't put those screws on yet. We need to put that ring on, the, retain, the retention ring, or whatever that you want to call it. And now that's going to put the uniform pressure on. Put the screws in. And let's just start tensioning this down evenly. I'll turn this sideways so you can see. I'm gonna put my finger on here to help with it. And you can see the gap getting closer, closer, smaller. And I'm gonna make sure that this is tight. So now that I got it tight on two sides, I'm gonna do just a little extra turn. Yeah, make sure that's tight. You don't want leakage. Okay, motor is back in place. And make sure you still keep those rings in there. And now that we've got that, we have to feed this line back through that hole. Gee, I hope this fits. And yes, no, let's see. Oh, there's another mistake. That is not going to fit. We got to take it off again. I can't believe. Oh no, no, I'm wrong. It does fit. It just fits. Yeehaw! Okay, you may want to put that on later, just be safe. But we'll figure that out later. Uh, okay, so we're gonna roll that through, and this is going to be going this way. So let's go and um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this up and I'll put it in and slide the tube through it. So let's get that rubber boot through there. And it's square so it only goes one way. So you get in there and then you find it and then I believe we just pull it and wiggle it. There, there you go. That was easy. Okay, so the last thing we have to do is get this block on, and the curve here matches with the curve there. So just take it, and it slides right on. For these little slits, therefore, your um, electrical to go through, and that's important because this line has to line up with 
the inside of that. By the way, the window is on the bottom right now as we do this. So we put these uh, wires in here, make sure we get the slack taken up as best we can. And with that, we can just start sliding together and give this a little pull as you do to take up the slack. Make sure the wires are out of the way and it should just go right in like that. And that will just line up just like that. Now the next step is make sure those seals are in place. There's one on the inside and one on the outside. And um, with this, you might want to take that out and make sure there's no corrosion on that, any guck. Clean it off. I did it with some water and my finger, and then I rinsed it off with some distilled water and put it right back. The next thing is that slit there lines up with the slit orientation of the pump. So we are going to take this, if I get my fingernails under it, <clears throat> there we go, and I'm going to just dry off any excess water before I put this together. Okay. Make sure that doesn't move. And these pieces just go like that. Line up the holes and drop your screws in. And don't mind that this seal came out. We're going to put that in in a few moments. And then we're just going to just take up the slack on these without tightening them right now. Because after we're ready, we're going to just torque them all down like a car tire. And you're going to feel these two pieces pulled together like a clamshell. I'm going to use the bigger point here. And I'll do two, one, two, three, one, two, three. And I'm just going to do this round robin until it really starts to take. And keep your thumb on the heat plate so you can feel what's happening. Because you're going to feel the, um, the two halves coming together as you do this. And you'll know when to stop by feel. It's pretty self-apparent. I just want it to go down evenly. I think I'm starting to bottom out. Yeah, I can feel it. Not much resistance left. And I'm just going to give it a nice little turn at the end because we don't want leaks. And I'm using this bigger tip just because it fits better because I don't want to skip and scratch anything. Okay, there you go. The line's up. We have this little piece that fell out. Just pop it in there. I got another one over in the bucket. And this pump is now ready to uh, be put back into service. So now I have this plugged into power. This is my power supply. And I know that I need about at least 10 to 12 volts here. And there's the black and the yellow in this case. I know that connects to, to the yellow is red. So I'm just going to plug in those two pins, ignoring the blue. And we'll power on to test. And I can hear the motor. And I can see the light came on. And I'm going to dim the lights now so you can see more clearly. The Alpha Cool lights up. And you can hear the motor is clearly spinning. So I believe this is a complete success and it looks as good as new, ready to be installed back in my computer. Well, we got her filled up with water and reconfigured. She's back on the test bench. You see the light is gone and the power supply there is moving right along. We got the flow meter doing well. We got a few bubbles still to get out of the system, but we're not seeing any leaks. And this is looking like a fine job. Well, thank you for joining me. If this tutorial was helpful and useful to you, please subscribe, like, and slam that notification bell. And that will help me to make more videos like this. Anyway, I'm going to put this back in my computer and get back to work. Thanks for joining me. Bye.